Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I went through all the action at the Cadets World Championships. To be honest, I never watch the Cadets. I might watch the World Championships every year, but apart from that, I'm only seeing these guys at this time of the year. It's good stuff. It's good to see these youngsters come out, especially from the Japanese team. This guy here, Miki, really stood out to me. It's an interesting weight category, plus 90. So you're going to get big guys, kind of guys who are the same weight as Miki. I think Miki is... Maybe just slightly above 90 kgs by the look of him. Definitely not over 100s, but hit a really nice style. Lots of attacking judo, forward pressure. I mean, watch this one here. Really nice. Takes a tricep grip. Gets really close to his opponent. Nice Ochi. Pushing him to the edge of the mat. And then a Sasai. And this is a really nice combination. That Ochi was slick. It wasn't used to throwing, but just to get him moving. And here's another one. You can see the activity. And a beautiful throw. Not kind of typical Japanese judo, but still. Of course, we'll go back here like that. Nice stuff. Also, guys, just some updates on the channel. Judo TV, if you want a discount, it's in the description. Also, I've started selling Kozakura judo gis. There were two people who put in orders, but they didn't put their contact information. So, if you two people could get back to me, that would be great. There is a Google form in the description. You can kind of fill that out and get an order placed, or if it's too difficult, just contact me on Instagram and I'll walk you through the process. Also, I started following this guy, Julian Brulard. He's a judo nomad, kind of going to different countries and trying to teach judo in every country that he goes. 197 countries, so it's quite, quite the project. I've put his information in the description if you want to follow him. He's had a bit of a hard time recently, so I thought I'd support him a little bit. And also, our World Masters gold medalist at plus 100, Puma Lainen. I think he's supporting him as well. So go check it out anyway. He's a good guy, and I hope his project goes well. Right up, let's get into the easy pawns. This one's a good one. Picture perfect, Harai Goshi. And the rotation he got after that is really good. Mongo, have to, have to keep an eye on him. This next one, probably my favorite of the tournament. Just a lot of combinations. Dropping Seri Otoshi attempt, Uchimata attempt, and then gets the Ashibarai. I mean, I just love these things, these combinations. Combinations are probably some of the most exciting stuff in judo. Sent him flying. Here's another one, Get a quick Ashiwaza. I mean, it's still a great technique, but it's not as exciting when it's in a combination. When you get combinations, it's really, really nice. Unless it's something like you know, Inoue's kind of Uchimata Sydney Olympics, that was quite incredible as well. Just the, the one step. Throwing people with complete dominance. Nice Kunanage here. And I mean, these guys that we're seeing right now, I mean, they are the future. The future of Judo, the cadets. They'll go through the juniors and then enter into the seniors. And I think a lot of them we will probably see in the next couple of years. I was trying to kind of pick up on things like, are the youngsters doing anything different to what the seniors would be doing? Didn't really see anything that stood out, but the one thing I really did notice, I mean, this is a great Ippon here, but a lot of the contests were just finished by Wazadi. I was like going through video after video after video, and I just couldn't find the Ippons. It was just a lot of Wazadis. I wouldn't say a lot of people were winning by Shido, but just a lot of Wazadis. So the Ippons were kind of rare. But I think as they grow up in age, you know, their techniques will get better. They'll get much better at planting people on their backs. I mean, when you think about it, it's, it's just crazy. A lot of these guys, I mean, how long have they been doing judo for? I think if any of them have been doing judo for more than 10 years, it's pretty damn impressive. That means, you know, they started when they were really young in their single digits. This, I guess this is a Taio Toshi. Kind of a mixed technique there. Hayatoshi slash Haraigoshi kind of combination. Hybrid technique, I guess. And watch White. White, you can see he's he's just walking on to Blue here. Blue had him going in the direction that he wanted to. It's a real problem in Judo. You want to go forward. You don't want to go too forward where you're kind of off balance. Ending up in situations like this. And you're just walking onto people's techniques. And I gotta say, I mean, I looked over 
um, all the Yupons for the Kidits, and there's a couple of Yupons in here from the Teams event as well. Obviously the, the French, they won the Teams event. But overall, I gotta say Spain. Spain, they had a lot of guys out there, a lot of good... I, I didn't look at the results, this was just my overall impression. The Italians, the Italians had a lot of really good guys as well. So Spain and Italy, I mean, they're doing something. I think Fabio Basili, he's probably definitely got some sort of effect in Italy there. This one's a little bit surprising. You would think a Mongolian would win the in close kind of situation like this. Both people are really close, taking kind of a beer hug grip. But nope, the Brazilian takes it. And sorry guys, I mean, usually I try to get people's names out there, but I don't know any of these people. Their name might flash up on the scoreboard, but I really don't know who they are. And this combination into the Kataguruma, I mean, watch this. A little bit of a Kochi on the other side. And then goes into the Kataguruma. Blue here, looking for a pickup. Gets caught off balance. Also, Bogake takes him behind. Uzbekistan, sorry, there's another country. Uzbekistan, and of course, I mean, Georgia, they were really strong. Japan, I mean, the women, I think they had two golds uh, for the women's, but the men, there were no golds. And they just, I mean, I'm kind of surprised. I, I thought definitely at the lighter weights, the Japanese would have taken at least one medal, especially since, you know, there's two weight classes under uh, 60 kgs. So I definitely thought the Japanese would do a bit better, but they didn't. Maybe a sign of things to come in the future. This guy here, he was really good from Georgia. Harai Goshi Makikomi. Several of those throws in this video. Sumigashi here. And I love this, you know. Someone goes, and then you go. Kind of catching them off guard, not letting them sit. Here's that Harai Goshimaki Komi again. What's his name? Givishvili? I'll have to watch out for that guy in the future. And this one here, this was a beautiful technique. My god. I mean, that grip there, is, it's kind of like a wizard. But to throw the leg across like that... I mean, that was sensational. Strong driving Kataguruma. From one of the Italians. And I'm just looking up the results right now. Seems Azerbaijan, they took first place in the men's. Uh, one gold, three silvers and three bronze. Pretty impressive. Uh, and then Italy, as I said, Italy very strong. Uh, they were pretty good. And then Kazakhstan. Serbia, Ukraine, uh, Turkey, Israel, Poland, Georgia, and France at number 10. Uzbekistan, 11 there. I did mention um, Spain. They are not on the list, so I don't know what it is. We'll have a look at the women's. Maybe it was the women's. They did well. Yeah, for the women's, Spain took three. Third place, Japan number one. And Brazil, number two. Anyway, see that Uchimata? That was a beautiful Uchimata. Taking two stabs at it. And this one here almost gets countered with the Uchigashi. But just stays strong. Commits to his technique. Look at that. Brilliant. That is a brilliant Uchigashi. Bit of fast footwork here. Counters the, the Kochi. With a, I guess a Kosoto. And here's one of the, the Japanese guys. Didn't place gold. I think his name is Yamamoto. Nice bit of Ashibaza straight into the Nemaza. And these cadets for Japan, I mean, even the men, very strong in the Nemaza. Especially at the lighter weights, these guys probably spend a lot of time on the ground. If you've ever been to a Japanese high school, there is a lot of Nemaza. 
And look at this, he's just sinking up a bow and arrow choke here, but I mean, the transition to get into the, this position was quite incredible. Low driving, Uchiyari here. And you're seeing this a lot more these days. I definitely think, I mean, if you, 10 years ago, you would not have seen this technique. I think maybe the Italians kind of made it a little bit popular, especially Palati. A little bit of Nerwaza here, hand feeding through the belt. And did you see that? Fit his hand through the belt. If you want to just tap the screen on your cell phone, go back a few seconds. Fit his hand through the belt and then grab the gi. Fed the jacket to his hand and then he went for the turnover. So I, I see a lot of people feed their hand through the belt. But I've never seen someone kind of feed the gi as well. Nice Kosotogake here. Is this guy a brown belt? It's interesting, the belt system. So a lot of countries, I mean, they do kind of, you know, blue, green, orange. I'm not sure what the other colors are. So when I came to Japan, I was kind of surprised. It was like white belt. And then if you're an adult, you win three matches and then you get your black belt. And that's what I did. I know that's what uh, Chetty did. Shout out to Chetty. Um, yeah, but in other countries, you know, you're doing these gradings, um, spending a lot of time kind of going through the ranks before you get your black belt. But Japan, um, they reserve that for children. So at elementary school, and my son, he started judo recently, he's four, and he is a white belt with uh, one stripe. Still only four years old, so he's got a long way to go, but... I don't know, I think, I think it's motivating for kids to get belts, get stamps, but uh, this is just my personal opinion, but if you're an adult and you're getting a green belt, a blue belt, it's just, it's just a money grab, to be honest, for your, for your dojo, I mean, if they, they need to make money, they got to do it somehow, why not, but in my opinion, it's just a money grab. And the whole belt thing, I mean... I know, champions, not national champions, but like champions, regional champions in Japan. And these guys have like just a first rank of their done. Here I am, I've got a third degree black belt, you know. Uh, it just doesn't really matter. Sorry about the ranting guys, I mean, usually I like to focus on the judo and the techniques, but I mean, honestly, I have no idea who these people are. Usually I'm giving backstories. Talking about past history, past matches, what they like to do. And I honestly have no idea who these guys are and what they like to do. Tall guy doing Sode here. And I really want to know, I'm a tall guy myself, especially being in Japan, but Sode, how do you do Uchikomi if your opponent's, if your partner is much shorter than you? I just find like. I would like to practice, you know, Sode, Seoinage, but uh, just getting the right Uchikomi partner to be a little bit shorter than me would be nice. Maybe I'm just lazy. Maybe I should step down there. This movement here. Jump in. And, I mean... A lot of these throws coming from Italians. I love this one. I, I do this counter. Someone throws a Sasai. You kind of just go with it. Place your weight on that foot that's in the air. It's a really good way to deal with Sasai. I love this Uchiyoti too. Kind of invites her forward. I don't know how to, how to describe it, but she's definitely inviting Blue to come forward and then going back on it. That's what you want to hear on the side of the mat. Now this is Shimizu and she did not win her weight category. I think. And this Uchimata, I mean, this is a beautiful Uchimata. Hopping Uchimata. 
Oh, sorry, Shimizu did take gold. Sorry about that. Honda and Shimizu, they took gold for the Japanese woman. Look at this, Harai Uchiuri there, and then white, and I really like this. So this goes into the, the Newaza. Does a little Tomoinage, but he wouldn't be able to get a score. Although, jumping on the arm. That kid did not like Uchi, like for me here. You can see white just walk onto it. Go left foot forward, right foot forward, left foot forward. Right foot forward, and then, then came the Kochi. It's a dangerous game in judo to be walking forward. I mean, Saito, he's been thrown a couple of times for doing it. I mean, most of our techniques are going to be coming when you're moving backwards, right? So, you know, forward pressure is good. Helps you get the grips. Helps you set up a lot of techniques, but... Definitely more techniques like this one when you're going backwards. And here, I mean, the French guy, I mean, he needed to go forward down on Wazari. You gotta do it. And that's a good way to go out, I mean. At least you tried. At least you tried. Guy from the USA here. Actually trained with someone from the USA. The other week, Shimizu from the USA, he is out from Tenny University, made a stop to our dojo, it was nice meeting him. Interesting stories, but I won't get into any of the details. Very, very interesting. Shimizu, if you're out there, you should write a book. Write a book. The Tales of Tenny. This Kataguruma here. Hooking with the leg. And white. Looking for all sorts here. Kochi, Ochi. And he didn't really have a grip. Look at this top grip. I mean, it's over the back there. And you guys know what I say. If you're not Georgian, you're not getting a throw with that grip. It's counted. Also, guys, we just got four or five more Epons to come. I did not mention this, but if you did enjoy this video, if you did want to see the cadets and how they performed, thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you haven't, because, I mean, these cadet, I, I don't know anything about the cadets, so I'm kind of stuck about what to talk about. But if you would like to see me kind of follow the cadets next year, we'll see how this video does. And liking the video always helps in that regard. This is a really nice Tomoinage, Yoko Tomoinage. Look at the move, the little step in the beginning to get it moving. Got some fabulous stuff. Sticky Kosoto there. Another one. And then goes for the Uchimata. Kosoto Uchimata, it's, it's like the... I mean, nobody really thinks of it as a combination, but I see it all the time. Here's a really nice Harayoshi Makikomi. And I'm not sure if Blue is from Georgia. I don't think he is. I think that said TPE, Taipei. Nice one here. White. Doesn't really have a grip. I mean, he's got grips, but I don't think he likes them. Not doing anything with that lapel hand. Would you believe this is the last one? That is, that is fast, guys. 19 minutes flew by. Alright, guys, comment below. And if you are one of those two people that ordered a gi but didn't write your contact details, let me know. I'll see you later. Peace.